Welcome to Love You a Brunch, the podcast for foodies and those who'd rather be brunching. Hi, I'm Jody Stapler. I am speaking with Michelle Dudash today. She is a dietitian, nutritionist. She's a writer, a TV personality, and of course, a chef. And you have written a new cookbook called Clean Eating for Busy Families. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is such a pleasure to be here today, Jody. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, first, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into this whole food career and, you know, where'd you get started? Yeah. So, okay. I've been cooking pies since I was like eight years old. I guess that's really where it all started. And um, my love for food grew as a child with my grandmother and I majored in dietetics in school while working in restaurants since the age of 14. Fell even more in love with food when I started going out to dinner more and I tasted these amazing Bordelais sauces, which is that really silky glazed yummy sauce that mm-hmm. comes in, in steaks, right? Yeah. And that's when I decided to go to culinary school because I was paging through Gourmet Magazine back in the day and reading cookbooks like they were novels. So that's right. really where, yeah, there was the nutrition aspect, the restaurant aspect, the fine dining aspect. And then it, over the years, just all snowballed. And here we are today yeah. with a healthy cookbook. Yeah. Now explain what clean eating is for those that might not know. Clean eating is choosing whole foods in their least processed state. So, you know, the word process gets thrown around quite a bit. Most foods are processed at some point, you know, like an apple you pick from a tree that's washed probably before it comes to you at the grocery store or if something happens to it. I mean, unless you're literally just picking it right off and eating it. Um, but it's, it's, you know, whole foods have tend to have more fiber. They tend to have more vitamins and minerals. So instead of being highly processed, um, they have, they retain more nutrients. So okay. there's like, it's really, foods really fall on a continuum. You have your least processed and your higher. So, I say go for the lower process. Those foods are cleaner. They don't have the additives. And you know you know what's exactly what's in your food. Yeah. And so would you say that it's probably best to eat more locally because it's going to be the fresher food and not preserve, you know, things that don't have much preservatives and things like that? Of course, you know, choosing local when possible is fantastic. That isn't always an option for everybody. You know, like if you live in the Midwest during the winter time, you're going to have more limited options compared to somebody in California who has this amazing bounty all year long. So when you can within your budget, within the time and clean eating can work for you. You got to find the the sweet spot that's going to work for you because, and, and you know, finding what's realistic and that's where especially clean eating for busy families comes in. Because families, they're, ta- they're, you know, they're taking care of children. So time may be more, even more limited. Uh, so you got to find what works for you. Local, great. Um, if you can't get to the farmer's market, or if you can't get to that uh, Whole Foods, for example, you just, you find, you read those labels and see what's, what's closer to you. Yeah. Well, what I love about uh, your cookbook, as I'm looking at it, is it does give you the shopping list, which for... A, a busy mom myself is nice. Um, it, you not only give the shopping list for like a weekly, but you go quarterly, you go monthly. You even say about uh, some convenience foods that are, you know, great for shopping, the, your shopping list, which is also especially I like this would have been great for me when I first had my kids. I mean, mm-hmm. it's great now too, but my, you know, for those new moms who, you know, are busy on the go and really just need help with this. A lot of us need help, you know? Um, and like I said, even now that most of my kids are older, I still have a, a younger, well, most of mine are in my teens now, in the teens now, but my younger one is nine. And even with as busy as we are with her, it's nice to have something already written out for me so that mm-hmm. I don't have to sit there and go, okay, what do I need? What do I need? So yeah, I really appreciate that. That's for sure. So thank you for that. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, I even, I even use my own shopping list. I use my, in the book, I use, I still even, you know, after all this time and working with all of these recipes, 
Yeah. I will open up the book and look for ideas that I've already created because you know, you're busy. You can't, you, it, it's nice to have those things in front of you. And yeah. just as reminders of, Oh yeah, my family loves this recipe. I'm going to make right. this recipe. And you know, the planning makes such a big difference. Uh, having that armed being, being armed with that grocery list beforehand, and that's going to cut down on your impulse shopping and just keep you on track. Helps yeah. keep the kitchen on track, helps keep you on track, uh, and it will save you time in the long run. Right. Absolutely. Well, and I love um, some of this. I love this one recipe name in here. It's mix it once, milk it for the week. Garden Caesar pasta salad. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about that. So it's, you know, you, you make it and you just it, keep eating it all week. It's, it'll be great, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, when you food prep for salad, sometimes with a recipe, I'll make twice, I'll make two times what the recipe says. Like mm. with that Caesar salad, you can make it, eat it right away and then save it for the, a few days because it's the same amount of time to make enough for one day versus three days. Same thing with there's a chili in my book. You can follow the recipe to the T or you can double it or triple it. Certain recipes taste even better the next day, like chili, mm -hmm. like a spaghetti sauce, like a yeah. lasagna. So when you can batch cook, it's going to give you triple the results with the same amount of time. So it's, uh, it's really going to help you with time management. Yeah. Well, the, the recipes look amazing. They look delicious and they look like, like for me, like my oldest child is 19, my youngest nine. I've uh, two more in between. It, it looks like there's going to be something I can find that's going to please everybody in here. What? Yeah, I've tested say? this. I've, yeah, I've tested yeah. this on my kids for sure. In fact, my daughter's only nine years old as well. My oldest is nine. So we have okay. a similar there. But yeah, I've yeah. tested all these recipes on my family because, I mean, at the end of the day, They've got to eat it. That's what's good. <laughs> yeah. If they don't eat it, it's not making you, you know, why bother? So um, the lasagna, for example, that was a, a, a new addition to the book. And my nine-year-old absolutely loves it. She was actually the inspiration behind oh, that nice. particular recipe. Yeah. And so it ended up there. So would you say that's probably like the family favorite for you guys? That's definitely a top one. There's also a meatloaf recipe in the book where they're little mini meatloaves, but actually what I've done, and, and there's a note in the book, you can bake those in cupcake tins if you want and make mini. So at my house, we call them meat, I call them meatball cupcakes because of course okay. with the child, you've got to meet, meet kids where they're at, you know? Oh yeah, it's absolutely. All about, it's all about how we market the foods. Oh Yeah. Yeah, we still joke um, as um, for my 19 year old, I could only get him to eat raisins be by telling him they were nature's candy. Well, there you so go. So it's all in what you call it, and especially <laughs> with so kids. True. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true. Sometimes if I'm, I'm tempted to come up with like a fancier name, I'll think, no, they will have literally no idea if I say the word right. flatbread, just say yeah. pizza or whatever it means. Exactly. <laughs> Break it down to what they, what they realize, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what would you say is like a good one for um, if you're going to be cooking for a large group of people, not just your family, but, you know, people are coming over, what would be a good recipe in here to use for that? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a chili recipe that is so good. You put it in your slow cooker. It's a it's beef and kidney beans. And mm. um, it's it's just so satisfying. And people can make it their own. I like to put, make a, you know, triple that batch, put it in a slow cooker. They can top it with whatever they like. We, I always put out a spread of like scallions and avocado and cheese. And so no matter what dietary plan somebody's on, they can probably eat that food, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and that just gives people options. And I'm all about giving people options because there's so yeah. many different plans out there and allergies and intolerances. So, and that's what in my book, I really try to, uh, again, just help people with an, a different options for their plan, whether they're dairy free or gluten free. There's an entire chapter on vegetarian and vegan. There are options for somebody's going lower carb. There's different ideas for wraps and things that you can use uh, and adapt your recipes. So there's really something yeah. for everybody. 
Yeah, and I love that because, you know, you, uh, for me, I have a family of six. We all are a little bit different. You know, I have my my 14-year-old, well, well, no, I'm sorry, he just turned 15. My 15-year-old um, is vegetarian and has never eaten meat in his life. So this these uh, this one section is perfect for him. And then there's my nine-year-old who loves meat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a little bit of everything. And I'm loving looking at the turkey uh, pie that you have in here. Mm. Let me get back to it. That looks turkey amazing. Pie, yeah. Yes, Thank yes, turkey you. vegetable pot pie. Yeah, the crust yeah. looks amazing. Oh, it's so full of food. The filling is awesome. Yeah, I, I don't skimp on the portions. I like to bulk things up. Yeah. So you feel like you, you really are satisfied. I want people to walk away. And that's at the end, when I test a recipe, I'll... If I get to the end of that plate or bowl and I want more or like, you know, or I'm satisfied, those are the things I look for. Like, oh, this needs to be a bigger portion or, oh, that's plenty of food or, but while still keeping all the nutrition and balance, the calories. And um, so people don't even have to think about that. They just make the recipe. They feel good afterward and they're satisfied. But that turkey pot pie, yeah, yeah. I love, I, I, I love taking comfort foods um, that, um, mm -hmm. people really enjoy and just try to find ways to make them lighter while still keeping in all of, all of that taste. There's another recipe yeah. in the book for a crowd. Uh, it's the braised pork buns with quick pickled mm. cucumbers and bean sprouts. That, I, that was um, inspired by some Korean food that I tried once. And you basically just take this, just take your pork butt and or the pork shoulder is another name for it and you sear it off yeah. you put it in your slow cooker and it makes enough for 11 sandwiches so you can wow. have a party or i'll just freeze part of it eat it for the whole week and it's fantastic yeah you could actually use this cookbook like every day of the week because it's a you have a little bit of every kind of flavor and cuisine so like you have the beef stir fry with the uh, tomatoes and edamame and then orange peel beef and broccoli stir fry with brown rice the next day so and then like you said a korean barbecue a couple pages later so it's you can never get bored yeah i i um like to mix things up every season i swear i fall into like a food rut with just like you know the produce so i'll be like okay what's something new what's a new flavor and that's yeah. and those are the types of things you find in the book from mexican to italian to a variety of different asian cuisines japanese chinese uh, korean of course our classic american comfort foods um so it's it just it just offers yeah all those it's tastes. it's perfect mm -hmm. for you know, and you often as a mom, like when you're cooking all the time, like I, for me, like I said, my oldest is 19. So I find myself going to what I know that they're going to eat and I know they're going to like. What happens is you're making the same thing every other day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this, I'm, I'm really excited to try this and try this book and try to get all my all my kids to actually sit down with us. That might not, might not happen, but <laughs> at least I think that once they see this food, they're definitely going to eat it. Um, what's also good is that you have a lot of desserts in here too. Oh yeah. I have a sweet too. So, yeah. so does so, my family. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> so yeah. do I. So like the peanut brittle cookie bars with dark chocolate drizzle. Mm. I mean, ah, oh, amazing. Yeah, that's a really popular recipe. I love, that's one of my favorites, actually. They're just really crunchy and the, the nuts, and you can switch out different types of nuts with that too, cashews and pistachios. Uh, so you get that crunch and just a great taste. Yeah, different, there's different recipes. My daughter, my nine-year-old loves the fruit pizza. That's probably one of her favorites that she asks for. Mm. And ki my kids, now do your kids love popsicles? My kid, like free freezer pops. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, my, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's a, a real strawberry ice pop recipe in there. there so it uses a container of mm. real strawberries, very small amount of sugar. Ooh. They have a beautiful red, bright color, but you won't find any food coloring or any, it's just pure yeah. clean ingredients. So that's a really popular one too. Nice. And that's what, you know, that's what you want. Unfortunately, we get so used to picking up the easy process stuff. But if you have this that you, you know, take a time and you make this stuff and you have it around, mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, you feel safer with your kids eating that. Yeah, I feel so good about it when I do that. And, you know, it might not be every day that you'll have time to um, right. make a dessert or something like that. But I look at it as 
I'm not, I'm not a huge craft person, but I will make recipes right. with my kids. So that's, that's, a, that's become our craft. So when there's, we're looking for an activity to do, it's like, oh, we just pull, up, pull out a recipe. We're going to make the, tur- the turkey meatball pops. We're going to make the strawberry freezer pops. They could decorate the fruit pizza. So it, it becomes a fun activity. And you can get your kids involved in the kitchen at a pretty young age. There's just, of course, different, oh, different yeah. skill levels for each uh, group, age right. group. But they love to help in the kitchen now do you cook at all with your kids do you like to do they like to do that I do yeah. um the well the my my boys are now 15 uh-huh. 18 and 19 mm-hmm. and they did when they were mm-hmm. younger my 18 year old will cook for himself now um the 19 year old will go to the 18 year old and ask him to make him something <laughs> <laughs> but my nine year old of course she's into everything Aww. she's my only girl so she's into everything. So anytime she can be in the kitchen to cook something, it's just another project for her. So yeah, she loves to do Aww. it. Um, yeah. So it's, it's fun um, to cook with her, but she's a little bit independent. She doesn't like me to tell her that she needs to do this or, Hey, do you need my help? She takes that as me saying she can't do it on her own. I think that's from being the youngest of four kids. <laughs> she wants to do it on her own. So, um, yeah, and these look simple enough that she would be able to do that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, your daughter, your nine-year-old sounds like my five-year-old, Stella, who will insist <laughs> oh, she yeah. knows absolutely how to crack the egg. And I just, yeah, it's like, whatever, okay, have that, that, yeah. and we'll pick out the shells yes. here. Yes. <laughs> now, is she your youngest? She is. The five-year-old? Yes, yes, I have two. Okay. Yeah. And she is super yeah. independent. I think, yeah, to your point, she's the youngest, so. Yeah. Yeah, really. I think it it's it comes from you know let me show them I can do it type of yeah. attitude t- personality and I get it she's had four I'm sorry three older brothers that have constantly been you know doing things for her mm-hmm. and protecting her and she she wants out of that yeah. now <laughs> yeah 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 so what would if you if I was going to um, like f- first pick up your book what's the first recipe you think you would recommend people try. Oh, okay. Well, my favorite right now is the chicken. It's a one pan chicken parmesan with spinach. Mm. I've been, oh, people love the one pan. Yes. And I, I know it's funny. I originally, I was like t- playing around with it and using different pans. I'm like, wait a minute. This can be made, made so much easier. So what you do, you, 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 I like to use a big cast iron skillet. You just sear off the chicken. Yeah. So it's light. It's not like has, you know, it, it's a reinvented chicken parm. So it's just lightly breaded in a little whole wheat flour. Or you can also use almond flour if you want to go grain free. Then you, um, yeah. so you pound it out. You roll it in that. There's some seasonings. You sear it on one side. Then meanwhile, in your blender, you take a can of whole tomatoes. Easiest recipe, pure, just pulse it with a little salt amazing sauce so simple just want to make sure you use quality canned tomatoes simple ingredients and then yeah. you take your spinach you can throw in the microwavable bag kind or you can just of course cook your own um as is but i'll just throw in the microwave bag squeeze it out plop those in there and then you just top it off with your mats and you bake it and then it's about 30 minutes later you have this bubbling hot comforting chicken parmesan yeah, it looks amazing. The the picture, I mean, I know that if I served this, the smell alone would get everybody into the kitchen. And then once they saw it, they would be digging mm. in. This is exactly the type of food my family eats. Yeah. Yeah. I created that when I was a private chef. They wanted, um, that. That's where, the, that's where that whole recipe started. And I've been like t- literally tweaking it over the last 10 years, which yeah. only makes it better and better. Right. Now, and and I'm excited about this, too, because I don't know why, but for some reason, different tomato sauces, canned tomato sauces, will, I have an allergic reaction to them. Oh. But if I just eat, um, like if I make my own tomato sauce, I don't have any issues. Mm-hmm. And this one is so simple that I can make it myself. I know what's in it. And I can't, you know, it's, it's quick. It's not like one that I'm cooking all day long. Like I do in, in the summer with my tomatoes. Right. So this I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. You can use it's And it's like, so you could use jarred, of course you could, there's the carton. There's the, obviously if you make your own, um, and no, it's literally ready when I, in the times that I put in the book, people say when Michelle says 30 minutes, she means 30 minutes. 
Um, that one, that one <laughs> is a little longer just because it has to go in the oven. But you, within under an hour, for sure, you have that meal ready, and it's yeah, yeah. Good yeah, no, well, everything looks amazing. The sweet potato planks with the Jamaican jerk chicken. I mean, the recipes themselves, like I said, there's nothing to make you bored. I mean, you're not going to be eating the same flavors every night, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little bit of every culinary style there is, which is exciting. Yeah. And it's clean. It's clean eating for your family. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Good. Okay, so is this your first... Um, clean eating cookbook or this is so okay so the original clean eating for busy families came out um, six years ago it sold okay. uh, you know around 25,000 copies so we this is the revised wow. and expanded and people are still cooking from from the first edition the first you know they're still cooking from it they're still buying it yeah so my publisher and I we decided okay it's it's time. We need to give the people what they want. So what I did was right. I added 10 new recipes. There's new images. Uh, we even reshot a few images. I went through the entire cookbook. And, you know, think back six years ago. Some ingredients were not readily available, especially if depending right. on the city you lived in or where you shopped. But, like, six years ago, almond flour wasn't that easiest to find. Now you can find it anywhere. So I've worked in more of those ingredients because they're more readily available yeah. now. So, and that's one of my big things. I don't want people having to go to three stores just to make a recipe. Yeah. It has I, everything in my book you can find at a regular grocery store near you. And um, mm -hmm. it, that also, of course. And that's important. Yes. Cuts yeah. down a big time on yeah, time. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I'm loving it. I'm, you know, zoodles were not a big thing six years ago. Now, of course, everybody's, you know, got the zoodler and the new, the noodler for the attachment. So I'm excited to try those. And, oh, I just, right now it's lunch. I haven't eaten lunch yet. So looking at this book right now, <laughs> it's about food. I'm, I'm getting very hungry. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I mean, the spiralizer. <laughs> yeah, the spiralizer. I just picked one. It's one of those things. It, I know it's, yeah, it's over the years. It's this, just been snowballing. And one day my husband, yeah. he just came home with this handheld spiralizer. Like he bought on a whim and I thought, and I kind of was like, oh, okay, that's a try. And then one day I, I was like, all right, I'm giving this a try. And now I'm obsessed. I, and, you know, yeah. and I don't personally, I, I like carbs and I, I eat pasta, uh, but this is, this, it's a great option to just enjoy as a vegetable as is. It's a great mm -hmm. pasta replacement. If you, you know, if you are, um, limiting grains for um, whatever reason, and it's, uh, it's just fun. It's really fun. It has a fun texture and it actually, it, again, getting back to that breaking out of a, if you're in a food rut that will break you out of a food rut. And I add mint and garlic and red wine vinegar to that recipe. That was inspired from a mm. trip. I took this cooking class in uh, Sorrento, Italy a couple years ago. And she, oh, amazing. it was amazing. And she didn't use a spiralizer. Of course she used uh, her sort of sliced nice. zucchini, but she just put on this fresh mint. And so I just took that flavor profile and added it to that. And it just, again, just really wakens up your taste buds. And it just, it just reinvigorates your healthy yeah. eating efforts. Yeah. Well, and also it's a great way to get kids to eat vegetables without realizing it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> because, you know, the, the texture is so different than if you're just slicing up a zucchini or a beet or whatever. And they do see it as pasta. So it's a great way to get that vegetable into those kids that maybe do not eat vegetables mm -hmm. <laughs> or have a problem with it. So, yeah, it's it's an awesome way to do that. Well, thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kids are funny about textures, aren't they? They um, textures and sizes, and that's a, I think an important tip for parents who are dealing with picky eaters. Is sometimes it's not having to just to, you know, and I don't recommend making two meals for um, one family dinner. There are ways you can just tweak things. Maybe it's the way you cut something. Maybe you're just cutting their chicken into a smaller piece before it goes into the pan. Um, or just maybe leaving off that green thing that you that really you really want to eat, but those little tweaks that you make to recipes, which I also point out in the book to help people, yeah. uh, those can really help keep that one family meal alive. Absolutely, I I know I used to have to do it with mushrooms. Uh, My now eighteen year old did not like the texture of mushrooms. He didn't mind the flavor. 
So if I cut them small enough that they mixed in with everything else, he would have no problems. Mm -hmm. But if it was sliced where he could see it was a mushroom, immediately it was a major issue at the table. Uh. So, I mean, you know, parents learn these things. And, and it's great that you have those tips in here for those moms who haven't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. <laughs> where all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, what do I do now? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Good. Yeah, you never know when your child will go into a, you know, sometimes they'll start like mine, you know, they start out, oh, they're the best eater. And then one day they just wake up and it's like, whoa, what's happening? What? What? You're not supposed to be here. What is happening? And then, you know, eventually exactly. they come out of it. But um, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, it's it's an awesome cookbook. And I'll be honest with you, it's probably one of the, my favorites that I've been look, um, looking at recently. And I really do feel like I'm going to be trying it. I'm going to I'm going to make my grocery list according to this book and plan my menu out for the next couple of weeks from the book and see you know, go through it and see if I can get my kids to actually, because they, they're to the point now where they, my older boys, they'd rather go down to the convenience store and just grab something from mm-hmm. there. And it is tough to get them to sit and eat with us now that they're older. It's, I'm feeling so old today, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm excited to try this. I really am. Yeah. I re- thank you so much, by the way. That really means a lot. Yeah. I recommend, and I, parents have told me this, their kids will just sit down with my book and they'll start paging through and they will literally go through it page by page. So, you know, give that a shot, you know, give it, give the hand off the book to your child. Maybe they'll see something that catches their eye, you know, when they're, of yeah. course, like, you know, for the, especially those independent kids, let them, okay, what do, what do we want to try for dinner tonight? And you, they might surprise you. Yeah, well, and, and everything looks amazing. Every picture in here is, looks delicious and Especially coming from someone who's hungry right now, I could eat every little picture on this <laughs> this book. Oh. So yes, absolutely. Well, when is the book available? It's available on March fifth. That's uh, but you can pre-order now. So um, okay. right now you can pre-order on anywhere. Everywhere fine books are sold, and it will um, arrive by March fifth. And if you like, especially on Amazon, for example, you'll be guaranteed, you're guaranteed the lowest price. You don't get charged until the book is shipped. So you just put yeah. that thing in your cart and you'll get a nice little surprise on March 5th. <laughs> Very good. That's awesome. Um, so they can, where can everybody find you? Yes. Go to my website, michelledudash.com. And that is the hub for all things, all my cleaning recipes. There's information on the book and direct links to your favorite bookstore. And um, also, of course, where to follow me on social media and just Perfect. stay in the loop. Well, th- thank you for joining me today. Thank you for giving me the review copy of the book because I'm telling you, it is, it, the, the recipes look amazing. They look easy enough that... I can make them with my nine-year-old, and I'm excited to try them. I love it. I love hearing that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So make sure everybody go pick up Clean Eating for Busy Families. It really, I think, will take a lot of pressure off of uh, busy families. It it helps you with the, the shopping list and everything. So it's a perfect book for a family that has... Uh, wants to sit down and have a dinner with their family, but just doesn't seem feel like they have enough time to do it. This will give you the time. So make sure you go out and get it. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I look forward to trying all these recipes. Well, thanks so much, Jody. Thank you. Take care. I want to thank Michelle Dudash for joining me today and telling me all about her cookbook, Clean Eating for Busy Families.